Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining me as we continue our devotions in the book of Nehemiah. We're now in chapter 5 um, and we're going to read the first 12 verses of this chapter. So let's listen to God's word. Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their Jewish brothers. Some were saying, we and our sons and daughters are numerous. In order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, we are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our homes to get grain during the famine. Still others were saying, we have had to borrow money to pay the king's tax on our fields and vineyards. Although we are of the same flesh and blood as our countrymen, and though our sons are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved. But we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are exacting usury from your own countrymen. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them and said, as far as possible, we have bought back our Jewish brothers who were sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your brothers only for them to be sold back to us? They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. So I continued. What you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are lending the people money and grain. But let the exacting of usury stop. Give back to them immediately their fields, vineyards, olive groves and houses, and also the usury you are charging them, the hundredth part of the money, grain, new wine and oil. We'll give it back, they said, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Such contrasting chapters. Chapter 4, unity. The project going ahead. It appears to be making great strides. The workers seem united, committed to the task, working long and demanding hours. There's a massive show of strength to the enemy as they work together, ready and prepared for all eventualities. And suddenly, there is this division that seems to come from nowhere. And the reason for it, of course, is sin. Unconfessed unexpressed and hidden. But suddenly it surfaces with this devastating consequence. It brings the work to a complete standstill. Now imagine Nehemiah's surprise as this crisis unfolds before him, as the, uh, the frustration of the poor boils over into physical violence against their rich countrymen. Because you see, the rich have been exploiting their brothers, adding to their great wealth by adding to the suffering of their own people. And what they've been doing, of course, was to break God's law. Read of that in Exodus 22. By ensnaring their own fellow men, their own countrymen, in debt by charging exorbitant interest, which was forbidden. And of course, there'd been a famine. Read of that in Ezra chapter 10. And grain was scarce. And so the rich had, in a sense, manipulated and monopolized the grain. And they had then began to charge their fellow countrymen, the poor, prices which they could not afford. And so they've had to um, set their children uh, aside to become slaves to the rich. Um, they had to mortgage their, their homes and their lands. Everything that they had was taken from them by the rich. And Nehemiah hears of this. And he tells us that he thought about it. He gave time thinking through what he should do, what course of action he should follow. And I'm con convinced that that would have included prayer. He would have brought it to God. And he comes to them 
and he confronts them. He tackles this crisis head on. I was incensed, he said, incensed that they had broken the laws of God, incensed that they were flaunting and disobeying God's will, white hot with anger because of of its impact on the people, on the lives of God's people, and on the work that God had called them to. There was no place here for compromise. This situation had the potential to undermine the entire enterprise, to do what the ridicule and the intimidation of the enemy failed to do, stop the work. And I think it's important for us to remember that Sin never takes place in isolation. It will inevitably leave the private confines of our hearts and our minds or the room an impact on the fellowship of God's people, the community of God's people. So we need to be vigilant, not simply alert to the external threat and intimidation posed by the enemy, but alert to the internal threat that comes when we do that which displeases God and we do not confess it and are forgiven. The things that we do and the attitudes that we display to our fellow uh, brothers and sisters that leave them feeling less important, less useful, less wanted, closed out and unnecessary. We must be on the alert against this. So Nehemiah's response was, as I said, he thought about it, he prayed about it, and then he called a public meeting and denounced their sin. The practice of usury said, must stop. It must stop now. Give back the things that belong to your brothers and sisters. And some commentators suggest that this was a sabbatical year, a year when all debt should have been rescinded and the rich knew, they knew this, but they held on to the, the property of the poor. Give them back immediately, said Nehemiah. Your exploitation must stop right now. And he shamed them, in to, uh, shamed them to respond in the way that they had. We, we'll, we will give it back. We will give it back, they said. We need to be accountable to God. We need to be accountable to one another. We need to be accountable so that um, God's word and the influence of God's word on our lives might be seen. So that we can love each other truly. So that together when we work, we can work freely. We can work in the knowledge that there is nothing underlying our actions. There's no underlying motives that we're seeking together to do the things that God would have us do in our fellowship for his glory and for our blessing. So today, consider your heart. Consider how, when we get back together, as we will, how we can seek best to work together for God's glory. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the leadership of Nehemiah who was prepared to deal boldly with this crisis situation. Help us, we pray, not to seek our own good, but to seek the best for others. For Jesus' sake. Amen.